All right, check out that water pollution. Some uh, types of pollution would be anthropogenic, as we just saw there. A great example of a point source pollution too, where we can clearly identify that source. Um, hard to tell if it's gonna biodegrade over time or if it will just sort of persist in the ecosystem. Um, but that is definitely a direct form of water pollution um, versus being released elsewhere. Um, say if you spray your crops and then it rains and then those pesticides go into the uh, ecosystem. Uh, some natural sources are of course volcanic eruptions or mudslides which could affect turbidity. Um, Non-point source pollution is a huge problem. You know you think about your car just sort of dripping oil um, and then that's another indirect source right and then uh, as it goes into the storm drains enters the rivers. Um, and then the, the biodegradable or non-biodegradable you might think oh great it's organic that's going to be totally fine but actually that could lead to a lot of other issues um, so a more in-depth breakdown of the types of pollutant um, we have things like human waste or animal waste um, some washing powders um, these will more persist in the ecosystem um, insecticides and herbicides will bioaccumulate as we go up or will bioaccumulate and then biomagnify as we go up the, the food chain um, and then you could you know have some waterborne illnesses as well there was that great example on Oak Creek uh, the, I think it was during COVID year when they were doing some construction on the pipeline and then they accidentally busted the pipe open and dumped a bunch of sewage into Oak Creek well, luckily E. coli levels were back down within 24 hours but yeah pretty fun um, and then of course invasive species um, you might see some uh, crawdads at Oak Creek which are pretty invasive to some of the other invertebrates. Um, inorganic types of pollution uh, could include fertilizers um, especially nitrates and phosphates uh, that's the N and the P from NPK. Um, we could get some uh, toxic metals of course um, but then also uh, thermal pollution is kind of an interesting one um, so power stations use water a lot to cool off their equipment um, and then so ironically cooling well not ironically that's just how it works you cool off the equipment by putting the heat into the water and then you release that water back into the ecosystem um, could just directly kill organisms um, or you could have the opposite effect too um, in the southwest our rivers used to be really warm and now we have a lot of cold water coming through the dams um, and so that temperature differentiation um, doesn't really do well for our native species um, and then, of course, we got fun stuff like radioactive material, um, light pollution um, can affect some organisms, especially like turtles. Um, basically, uh, when baby turtles hatch, they look for the reflection of the moon or the stars on the ocean to know where to go to the water. And if they see lights from the city, they kind of confuse that light source and go in the wrong direction, have a really bad time. Um, but great example of an R selected species, right? Just have lots of babies and hope they know the right direction to go. Um, and then noise pollution. There's a lot of um, campaigns to stop the Navy from um, doing like sonar tests and stuff because there's fears that it affects, um, you know, whales and dolphins, other organisms. Um, and then we have a mixture, right? We could have um, suspended solids which will affect turbidity that's basically how cloudy the water is um, which you know obviously it doesn't look nice but if you're a plant you need that to um, get your photosynthesis going um, if you're a filter feeder all your you know filters are going to get clogged up um, ironically turbidity can be good if you're say a humpback chub and you um, kind of breed in that really turbid water um, and you don't want to get eaten by a brown trout that needs the clear water to hunt. Um, we might have some solid domestic waste. We get a whole subtopic where we talk about household garbage and how to dispose of that. Um, and then also debris as well. Perhaps you've heard of the Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, pretty famous at this point, unfortunately. Um, so here's just a nice little graphic showing all those different types of pollution. Um, where they might come from and then you can think about how the water cycle just sort of plops down over top of this right and then sends um, all these different sources of pollution into the common source of the water systems um, so one 
really neat way of measuring pollution in waters using indicator species. We are actually going to do this, um, but basically different types of organisms can tolerate different levels of pollution. So you can see that right here. Um, this is sort of like the canary in the coal mine, right? So back in the day, bring this little bird in there, and then if a toxic gas is being released, um, or I I'm pretty sure it was a gas, maybe it was like oxygen levels going too low. Carbon monoxide, though, I feel like is what, what it was. Anyway, bird, um, you know, much smaller system than a human, so that thing's going to have a bad time first. I'm not sure if they would actually die or if they would just pass out, but good sign that you should also get out too. Bad situation. Um, but anyway, you can use those indicator species as a biotic index. That's a great term to know if you're not writing that in your book. You definitely should. Um, and that will show the overall health of the aquatic ecosystem. Uh, so basically, if you see some stoneflies, you're like, oh, this is a great one. Um, and if you see mostly tubiflex worms, uh, not so nice. Um, and you can actually do some calculations uh, to get a value um, to actually compare different streams or um, different water systems as well. Um, so if you want to do some math practice, you can pause the video. Um, you are allowed to use a calculator. That's totally fine. Reasonably good and some moderate pollution. Um, the last topic is going to be uh, biochemical oxygen demand. So as we were looking at in class, this is the amount of oxygen that's needed to break down organic material. Um, so basically, when you throw um, compost, if you will, into the water, that's going to be um, decomposed, and all that decomposition is going to use oxygen through respiration. Um, so that's what changes your BOD, basically. Um, so the question is, will a high BOD lead to more or less dissolved oxygen? And of course, as we know, that jump in demand in pink here leads directly to a dip in dissolved oxygen. And then eventually that can recover. But you can see the indicator species, right? Mostly those nasty little worms over here because it's pretty low in oxygen, not so nice of an environment. Um, so this nice little graphic just shows how oxygen is added back into an ecosystem. Um, so I like to think about stagnant ponds are really low in oxygen usually because they don't have all of that movement. Um, and you kind of might end up with a feedback loop if stuff isn't growing. You might not get an input of oxygen um, from photosynthesis or other methods. Um, so some other methods of, of uh, measuring, especially more abiotic factors of water, um, of course, pH. You can actually take a meter to measure dissolved oxygen. Um, hardness is basically the amount of calcium in the water, which we can see a lot here in Sedona if you boil your water. Um, you might actually, oh, there should be a picture. There it is. When you boil your water, that calcium is deposited on the edge. Or, or if you go to Fossil Creek, say, you could see um, all that calcium on the leaves, which make it look like a fossil, not actually a fossil. But that's where it gets its name. Um, the Sechi disk is a really cool way to measure um, basically how clear the water is, turbidity. Um, so you measure how far down it goes before you can't see it anymore. Um, you know, in some of our streams, it's like, right there. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't see anything. It's just brown. doesn't even look like water. One time, Kaylin's mom thought we were sitting on land. We were sitting in the water. It was just brown. Um, great. So the summary, this is the stuff from the IV guide that you're supposed to know. If you want to pause and copy all this down, um, your hand might hurt, but you might remember it a little better as well. Um, I would make sure that I have the, the big ideas here um, and then jot down kind of supplementary notes as I need to. Um, and then some interesting little videos, well, one video and then the original paper as well um, about microplastics um, and how those sort of um, end up in the ocean. So I'll post that in the description.